Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Uh, today is mini project. We're going to do our mini project number two. So we got the first one done, the inaugural JCAR mini project, which was of course our... Um, uh, which way do I show you this? This way. That was our, our first project, the uh, symbol keyboard. So it's a little touchscreen keyboard that we put together. That was the first project. Um, the second project, which we'll be doing today, uh, is also uh, an Arduino project. Uh, this is project uh, JMP002. Um, it was released a bit after the other ones, JMP003, JMP004. Uh, a bunch of other projects came out chronologically before JMP002, but I'm going to try and do them in... Um, uh, not in the order that they come out, but in the order that they're numbered. So uh, JMP002 did eventually ship, and it shipped in uh, the July issue of the magazine. This is Silicon Chip Magazine. Um, this is the July 2024 issue, which contains uh, the second um, uh, JCAR mini project. Now, I remember that it was a... Um, uh, an Arduino project, but I guess I remember now. Uh, it's a uh, they, they call it a lava lamp. It's a it's a LED light show basically. Um, so um, what we're going to do is pop over to the bench and have a read of the article, um, and then once that's done, we'll jump on the computer and source some bits and pieces, uh, and eventually we'll we'll make it. So we'll be making that that uh, this project in this video. But first, we'll read about it in the magazine. So let's pop over to the bench and see what we got. Here we are on the bench. This is uh, July 24, uh, July 2024 edition of Silicon Chip Magazine. So we're going to be looking in here for our um, mini project. Uh, hey, they're talking about the Raspberry Pi 5. That's cool. I'm interested in that. There we go, mini projects on page 64 by our mate Tim Blythman. Page 64, 32, 49. Okay, there's a digital compass. That sounds cool. That's, that's project number eight. Wow, looking forward to that. And here it is, project number two. So, uh, are you going to fit him in? So let's have a read of this, um, and then once we've done that, we'll pop over uh, to the computer and just check it all out on the web. So this is uh, Mini Project Number 2 by Tim Blythman, uh, sponsored by JCAR and produced by Silicon Chip. It's the uh, Duino Tech Lava Lamp Display. Uh, lava lamps have always invoked a fascination due to the seemingly infinite patterns that they produce. The lava lamp patterns... <coughs> Sorry, uh, the lava lamp display is a simple Arduino project that emulates a lava lamp, creating a soothing view that doubles as a groovy night light. Okay, and there's a picture down here. Okay, so um, this is the hat that goes on the top. And they call it a hat. It's, uh, it stands for Hardware Attached to Top Hat. Um, and this is the um, the Uno, the Arduino Uno, with a a, a Type B uh, USB port. Um, and it's a uh, look at that. It's a it's a a, a big um, a, a big chunky IC. You can get them in various form factors. Um, we'll see what Arduinos I've got in the drawer. I've got all kinds. Um, this says assembly of the lava lamp display just involves plugging the LED shield into an Arduino Uno shown above. Uh, the blobs in the lamp drift around like those in a lava lamp. The software can be modified to alter the color or behavior if desired. And here he goes explaining the, uh, the circuit. The lava lamp was invented in 1963 and consists of a glass bulb containing a mixture of liquids like oil and water. An incandescent bulb in the base heats the contents and the different components swirl around due to their changing densities and surface tensions. 
The liquids are often colored and the random slow movements of their contents can be captivating and hypnotic. And bizarre as it may sound, lava lamps are even used as a source of random numbers for encryption. Companies like Cloudflare use them as part of their encryption process. See this YouTube video. Uh, our lava lamp display is a simulation of a lava lamp using software to imitate the physics. We can't simulate things down to the atomic level with an 8-bit processor, but we can create something that looks and behaves similarly. Our display isn't actually random, but it looks like it is. The photos show how the completed lava lamp display uses an 8x5 LED matrix shield uh, mounted on an Arduino Uno board to provide the processing power. Simulation. The simulation involves several blobs. Each has a temperature and position within the display. They are analogous to the balls of oil that break off and travel around a lava lamp. The temperature determines whether or not the blob rises or falls, mimicking its density changing. The position affects the temperature. When the blob is near the bottom, the temperature increases, as though the blob is being heated. Near the top, the temperature falls, as though by radiating heat to the surroundings. This feedback sets the scene for the constantly changing movement of the blobs. To avoid the blobs overlapping and disappearing, the simulation prevents a blob from moving on top of another. Uh, there's another um, graphic here. This is labeled, uh, Lava lamps are produced in a variety of colors and they produce unique and constantly changing patterns. And the source is Wikipedia. Fascinating. And on we go. To prevent a deadlock, Blocked blobs occasionally move in a random direction. This randomness comes from a pseudo-random number generator. The, uh, the blob's colors also <coughs> change depending on their temperature, adding further variety to the display. The result is a fairly convincing simulation of a lava lamp. Hardware and assembly. The construction phase of this project simply involves plugging the XC3730 shield into an Arduino Uno board. The XC3730 LED matrix shield <coughs> uses so-called intelligent RGB LEDs. We described how these LEDs work in an article on page 85 of the January 2020 issue of Silicon Chip Magazine. And then there's a link to that article. In summary, we can drive all 40 RGB LEDs on the shield using just one digital output on the UNO. Since the LEDs are already attached to the shield, assembly <coughs> is simple. Plug the XC3730 LED matrix shield into the UNO and connect the USB cable between the UNO and a computer. Programming the Arduino. You will need to install the Arduino IDE software plus some custom libraries. Adafruit's NeoMatrix library is responsible for driving the display. It can be installed along with its other dependent libraries by searching for NeoMatrix, NeoMatrix in the library manager. Look for the version by Adafruit. Download and unzip the software package for this project, which is available from Silicon Chip. Uh, next. Open the XC3730 Lava Lamp Colors sketch. Select the correct board type and serial port from the menus. Then upload it to the UNO. Arduino boards like the Leonardo should also work, but we haven't tested that. If all, all is well, you should see a display similar to that seen in our photo. There isn't much that can go wrong. It should just, just work. A video of it can also be found at the Silicon Chip website. Software details. The software has been written to be configurable, so there are some defines and variables that you can change to customize your lava lamp display. Remember to upload your sketch again if any changes so that they can take effect. The back color define sets the background color. The default is a dim blue. 
changing the number in the line matrix dot set brightness 6 will alter the display intensity. We have set it quite low so the lava lamp display is suitable as a night light or for nighttime mood lighting. Um, there's a part list here. We'll have a close look at that when we get on to the web in a minute. Um, but just briefly, um, the JMP002 lava lamp display uses one Arduino Uno microcontroller, um, one 8x5 RGB LED matrix shield, and one USB-A to USB-B cable. All right. Now, where were we? Uh, up here. All right. The color of the blobs... <coughs> I might just move that across so you can see it a bit better. Uh, the color of the blobs is set by the temp color array uh, based on the blobs temperatures. The default is quite subtle. You can try uncommenting one line at a time to see different schemes we have tried or you can make your own. To speed up or slow down the display you can change the delay function core within the loop function. A higher value will result in a slower update rate you can also change the number of blobs with the blob count defined. The heat map array dictates how the temperature changes based on position. The update blob function encapsulates the physics of how each blob behaves based on its temperature. For more advanced constructor, constructors, modifying the code can produce some significant changes to the simulation. All of these changes will have very subtly different effects on the model's behavior and lead to so-called emergent behavior, where a simple set of rules can result in complex outcomes. Another example of emergent behavior is a set of mathematical rules called Conway's Game of Life. You can see examples of this at this Wikipedia link. We have also... I should note, by the way, that the uh, that the um, logo that uh, I use for the channel for in the lab with JJ that that is also um, from Conway's uh, Game of Life. It's a, it's riffing on the hacker's emblem, which is the glider from uh, Conway's Game of Life. So there you go. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. We have also written an implementation of this scheme in a sketch called X3730 Conway, which you can try out by uploading it to the Lava Lamp display hardware. It is included in the same download package. There is an array you can use to set the initial conditions, after which you can see how the state evolves. Uh, each LED is either lit or not. Its state in the next phase of the sequence depends only on it and its immediate neighbors. The rules are pretty simple, but the animations generated look almost like they are alive, hence the name. Conclusion The lava lamp display takes a simple simulation of a lava lamp physics and turns it into a unique and mesmerizing display that can be used as a night light or simply for amusement. It shows how simple rules can combine to create complex behavior. Great. Well, what we're going to do now is pop over to the computer and and uh, and have a look at, at what's on the web. Here we are on the computer. So, <clears throat> let's go to our mini projects and let's put in an entry for today. <sighs> hmm. All right, let's find the article link. So, mini projects. And this was July lava lamp. So this is our uh, lava lamp from the July 2024 edition. So, and uh, we'll just call it the lava lamp display. All right. Now there's no blog article yet, but I'll come back for that. And this is the video that we're creating now. So both of those things are to do. Um,
<clears throat> this is the article on the uh, on the web. Let's jump ahead uh, to here. Okay, so I'll just uh, put that in plain view. Neat. Now this is of course what we just read on the um, on the bench. There are a couple of links, so let's pop them all out. There's this one, this one, this one, this one. A whole bunch of links. All right. So that's the uh, the pictures. Now this JCAR page is taking its time to load. Come on, JCAR. While it's loading, let's run ahead. Okay, this is a link to the um, the 2020 uh, magazine that they mentioned. There was a uh, there was something in here that was of relevance. Uh, perhaps something to do with the um, the uh, LED uh, matrix shield. Um, and then, ah uh, yes, okay, this is the code. So we're going to download the code. All right. Now, looks like we got a bunch of stuff in here from earlier. Um, we're going to want... Let's uh, create JMP002 mag. So that's our magazine article. And then we'll create a new folder. And we'll call it zip. And this is our uh, might just get rid of all of those all here. <clears throat> now, uh, let's um, extract here. Okay, so there's two different um, Inno projects. So, JMP. Uh, zero zero two, and we're gonna just go ino. Ino is uh, what they call the Arduino um, files. Uh. All right. So this is the um, the Conway's game of life that they mention, and this is the lava lamp. Uh, colors code. Uh, so that's good. Oh, here we go. So this is a video demonstrating the operation of the lava lamp display. So this is what we'll be building together uh, today. There you go. And uh, this is uh, Conway's Game of Life. There's a simulation up there. Um, that looks like the glider to me. Um, so there you go. Yeah, and you see um, this one, this one, this one. That's the um, the logo that I use up here for for the show. Good fun. Now, <clears throat> oh, there we go. So this is an article about how they use lava lamps for a random number generation. That's cool. All right. So. Uh, What's our next step? <clears throat> I think it's uh, getting the uh, equipment from uh, uh, so let's just uh, add add a folder and this is uh, JM uh, JMP002 We might just even just pop that there. Well, where are we going to put it? Just there for a second. And let's just drag in our various links. Doesn't want to go in. There it goes. So this is just. Uh, some documentation for me. <clears throat> hmm.
Now, I want to just duck back over to the article, and here are our links from JCAR. So we'll go to our uh, JCAR, and we'll just see. Okay, so we're not logged in, and our car is empty. And they haven't called it a bag, a cart. They called it a bag. Fair enough. So uh, over here we go. Oh, actually, how about here? Let's just close these, and we're going to get this. So we're going to check out the Arduino Uno, the uh, RGB LED matrix, and uh, a USB cable. Now, the last time I bought the um, the cable that they mentioned here, it was really quite short. It wasn't a very long cable at all. So, um, just be aware of that. If you're going to be buying your uh, cable from JCAR, make sure you get one that's suitably long for your uh, use case. The uh, JCAR um, website doesn't seem to be performing particularly well today, does it? There it goes. All right, so this is the Duino Tech Uno R3, which is basically an Arduino Uno. You pay uh, $38.95 if you want to buy one of these from uh, Jaker. And this is the, uh, so let's, uh, let's add to cart. And then uh, we've got the uh, Arduino compatible LED matrix shield, 20 bucks. I actually did get mine from uh, from JCAR. I paid twenty dollars for mine. It arrived yesterday. Uh, you might have seen that if you watched the uh, mail call video where I received it. Now this is it's a USB two cable, and how long is it? Fifty centimeters. It's not very long at all. So if you're going to be buying a, 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 a USB Type A to USB Type B, um, just check uh, that it's long enough because 50 centimeters isn't really very long. Um, we'll add that to cart, and we'll go over to our cart and we'll see what we're in the hole for. So uh, 6785 is the um, is the cost for this project. Uh, there you go. Now. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, the next step is kit construction. So I suppose we can do that together over on the bench. Let's let's pop over and get that done. Here we are back on the bench. Now this is my uh, Duino Tech uh, uh, XC thirty seven thirty, fresh from JCAR. I bought this from JCAR. I haven't used it yet. It arrived in the mail the other day, and we're going to want to plug it into an Arduino Uno. So let me show you what I've got on that front. This is my box full of Unos. So I've got uh, one which is type, type B um, and it's a surface mount SMD um, and then there's this one also type B surface mount uh, type B surface mount type B surface mount. So there we go. Um, now they're not all uh, the same. They're from various uh, uh, providers. This one is from uh, Lon Lonely Binary. I got some from Lonely Binary. I got some from Ellie Goo, but I'm not sure. Uh, this one's not really clear. Uh, these are the same. Not clear where they're from exactly. But look, Arduino boards are, you know, are all, all made from the same uh, chips, so they're all pretty much compatible. I've never had uh, an issue with compatibility. So we'll be using this board and this shield and uh, we're going to need um, uh, a cable uh, that's long enough. Um, I have a, a USB uh, type B cable on the bench here now so um, we'll see if that will do us. Um, just unbox our uh, our little Arduino uh, LED shield. So, haven't uh, used one of these before. This is the first time. So, in the box is our LED uh, shield. 2812 shield. And on the back are some jumpers 
for connecting to our board. So this constitutes the uh, assembly for this project. I've just got to plug this in and uh, and then it's done. So here we go. That's it. All right. Well, I think we got that right. Now, uh, I'm not sure if that'll turn up or not. Um, what I'm going to do is jump you over to the computer for the next bit. Let's stop this one. Here we are on the computer. Uh, and this particular computer is our, uh, our Windows computer. Now, I'm not sure what that is. It's pretty good to me. Now, oh, it's locked up. Why is he locked up? It's lagging. I'm not sure why. There it goes. What's it doing? In we go. All right. So let's go into uh, our um, our sketch. All right. Now um, there is no board attached. Um, so let's see what happens if we uh, throw the power on for our board. All right. Now we should have an Uno uh, somewhere. I wonder. Okay. Arduino Uno. And let's uh, let's try COM ten. And uh, can we identify? It says COM ten Leonardo. We want um. Hmm. Board info. It's not on COM3. What about that? Huh. Did we try 10? I forget. It's identifying as Leonardo. Uh -huh. Uh, why? I don't know why. Oh, dear me. Uh, so our Leonardo is still plugged in from earlier. Okay. So COM10 is the Leonardo. Um, and we want... Um, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to unplug the... Uh, the Leonardo. So there was a Leonardo plugged in there. It's tempting to plug the uh, the shield onto the Leonardo. They did say it was probably compatible. Hmm. I'm not sure. And I've got my uh, drawer here full of um, bits and pieces. This is. Uh, I'll use this one. So this blue cable here, can you see that? Yes. Um, it's a, a USB 2 uh, Type A to Type B cable, which is exactly what we need. So let's try plugging that in uh, over here. And uh, let's attach him pretty much directly to our computer. All right. Let's see what's happened on the uh, on the boards front. Is there any? Uh... Oh, it's 
Com 11. What do we reckon? Let's get board info. No. What about COM3? Oh, we're not having any luck. Ah. Alright, I'm going to go away, fix this, and come back later. Look, I haven't uh, solved the problem yet, but I thought the first thing we, we could do is um, uh, get the, the code actually compiling. So um, we can do that uh, without, uh, <coughs> without board connectivity. So let's do that together now. I want to go into the... Um, the library manager. So where is that? Manage libraries. And we're going to search for uh, Neo Neo Matrix. And then we're going to look for the Adafruit. Ah, interesting. So they've got a DM zero DMA. And it just looks like a normal one. So well, let's uh, let's install this. Uh, need some other dependencies. Uh, bus IO, graphics library, NeoPixel. Install all. So we're going to install all those dependencies. Did it work? Looks like it worked. So let's try compiling again. done compiling okay so compiled fine that's good and if we try upload what's going to happen okay it uploaded uh, but where did it upload I don't know what are we looking at using port com 11 there we go so we've got an Arduino on port 11 we've compiled and uploaded the code so let's throw you over to the bench and see this thing should be running. We'll see. And indeed it is. This is our uh, project. Um, he's flashing away there. Um, how will I show this to you? I'll, I'll turn off some of the lights in the environment. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll just see. What we've got now that intensity is a little bit too bright for uh, for the camera but uh, we might be able to uh, to adjust that I'll throw you over to the computer and let's see if we can turn the intensity down here we are back on the computer so let's uh, just hide that um, Give ourselves a bit more room now. Uh, okay, so we've got columns and rows. Uh, ambient. What do you reckon? I wonder what Ambient 5 does. Shall we search for it? Let's change it to 1 and just see what happens. Let's go uh, uh, upload. Alright. Done uploading. No, that didn't change what I thought it would. Oh, what about Blob T Max? Temperature Max? 7? I don't know. Let's put that back to 5 and let's put that down to 1 and just see what happens. 
and uh, if that fails, we'll. Uh... Oh, fascinating. Blob T Max. All right. Well, it didn't like that. So. Uh... Uh, blob T max is a is a uh, variable for our uh, temperature colors. Okay. <sighs> he did say something about uh, uh, luminosity or brightness or something. I I seem to remember. Um, I seem to remember something about a uh, let's go looking in the documentation so uh, uh, oh there we go now, uh, the software has been written to be configurable, so there are some divines and variables that you can change to customize your lava lamp display. Remember to upload your sketch after making changes. The back color sets the background. Ah, uh, there we go. Changing the number in set brightness will alter the display intensity. That's what we want to know about. So let's search in here for set brightness. There it is. Okay. So let's put the brightness. Let's assume one is low. So let's try that. Uh, let's upload that. And let's see what it does. Yes, right. Well, it kind of made a bit of a difference. I'm going to try it a bit higher. Let's try two. So uh, the default was six. We tried one. Let's try two. So uh, after that compiles, I'll throw you over to the bench and I'll show you what we're uh, what we're looking at. So here we are on the bench. Um, and uh, it seems that the uh, <coughs> the LEDs are uh, are quite distinct now, aren't they? So uh, that brightness had something to do with the the background. Gonna just uh, throw you over to the. Um, to the farewell cam and I, I think we'll wrap this up hi there look um, I started this mini project video a couple of days or maybe even a week ago now it's been sitting on my bench here for a while I've been doing all sorts of other things uh, in the meantime this is obviously project two that we're doing here I am so far behind on the um, the silicon chip and J car mini project videos I've only th successfully published the first one. This is the second one I'm working on now. Now, look, as I was doing it uh, over here, um, you can see that uh, that I started uh, uh, plugging it into my scope and trying to figure some stuff out. I I uh, I I got all the way into having a look at like um, doing uh, protocol analysis of the SPI or S SP2 or whatever whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> That it's using to communicate here at the moment that's way beyond my pay grade i'm not really ready to take it on i haven't got the time to get heavily involved in it just at the moment for this project i will be doing that sort of stuff but in the future not today and i want to catch up with the silicon chip magazine um uh, projects so i'm going to phone this one in i'm going to get it done uh very quickly this is the uh, uh as as you know uh, it's the um the lava lamp emulator it's basically a grid of resistors <coughs> um sorry a grid of leds um that uh 
that 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 uh, sort of floats around and such. Now I'll show you that. I'll, I'll bring up the uh, the bench cam or the the table cam, and we'll have a look at it working successfully. And I'll make sure that I get the software and everything deployed so that it's it's all there. But we're really uh, this is plug and play project at this point. Uh, we basically got the Arduino. Um, then we got the the JCAR uh, uh, hat, the hardware attached to the top, and we plugged it together, and then we uploaded the software. Um, so that's how uh, all of that worked. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to um, take you over now to the to to the computer. We'll we'll get this thing finished off. I'll show you it working, and we'll we'll call it a wrap so that I can move on with the other silicon chip projects. What we're not going to do is continue along the protocol analysis and trying to figure out how the Arduino is actually talking to the uh, the LED matrix. We're not going to we're not going to go that deep into it. Uh, but I will publish the the software. I'm not planning to mod the software for this one, so I'm just going to leave the stock um, uh, thing. Or maybe we'll change some colors or something like that. Anyway, we'll see now. We're going to jump over the computer. We're going fi to finish up the software for this thing. And then, uh, then I can get on with the other ones because I'm so far behind on the silicon chip uh, projects at the moment. So I, I want to get on with the mini projects uh, and this one we're going to complete now. So I'll throw you over the computer. Let's finish this thing up. All right, here we are on the, um, the, the lab computer. Now, why is that not working fast? It's a bit laggy. Um, <clears throat> let's see what we can find. We've got mini project here. Um, now, what's this? Okay. So this is uh, number two. Uh, there's an Inno project. That's good. So we've got the magazine. Okay, and it came with the Conway's Game of Life uh, code. And it came with the Lava Lamp Colors code. Uh, and this is the zip file that I downloaded from uh, the JCAR site, I think it was. Let's just open that out and check it out. Up we come. Yes, so uh, yeah, this was the download for JMP002. Um, and uh, this is the code that came with the mag, and then there's the code that we're working on. So let's go into the uh, colors. Now, um, I wonder if, uh, can we open a terminal here? Yes, we can. All right. I wonder where we are. Okay, it's good. Um, let's just see. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, just give me a second. Oh, actually, maybe we can do it from here. Can we do it from here? No, I don't think we can. All right, give me a second. All right, I'm back, and I've connected to uh, to Verve here. This is Verve. Um, now, where do we keep our mini project? Here it is. So let's open that up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Can I get a command window? Yes, I can. All right. So let's just see if we've got Git installed. Ah, oh, we don't have Git on this computer. If we don't have Git on this computer. Oh, it's it's mapped anyway. It's a mapped drive, so that that that'll be the the same. We don't need Git on this computer. Sure, it's on a file share. So let's go into uh, JJ5 and Lava Lamp Colors, and let's open this in the Arduino IDE. All right, now I'm not sure if I made any changes to this code. I don't think I did. Um, so it's it's just the the code that we've got. <clears throat> so we can change the colors here. We might do that in a second. So let's go. Um, uh, let's see if we can pick a board. Uh, um, tools, board, uh, AVR. Now, what sort of an Arduino was this? Was it an Uno? I think it was an Uno. And what port do we want it on? Probably 12. <clears throat> and let's see if, uh, if we can uh, upload that sketch. So, compiled. 
Yeah, that compiled okay. Still compiling. Trying to connect on. Okay. What we might do. Um, okay, well, first of all, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, let's transition this. There you go. So now you can actually see the uh, the, um, the the lights flashing in the top right of your screen there. So uh, let's give myself some room here. Make sure that you can see everything. So up in the in the top right of the screen there, you can see the current uh, the current code running on the device. Now what we might do is let's change to orange and blue um, just by changing this code that Tim left in here. Now it's control U to upload. So let's try compiling and uploading and hopefully the colors will change. They've gone to blue, blue and orange. Excellent. So um, that's what we expected to see. So we've changed the colors successfully. Good stuff. So I'm going to call this project complete. I'm going to throw you over the farewell cam and we'll wrap up. And that's a wrap. So uh, we got our um, our Arduino Uno with its JCAR uh, matrix LED all, uh, all, all plugged in and, and functional. You probably can't see it there in the highlight environment, but it's working. Um, we uh, modified the code to pick a different color scheme. There was three that Tim provided that were uh, available, so we just switched it out. And we've got blue and orange operating here at the moment. Um, so that's it. This this was ultimately just a plug and play software project, wasn't it? Um, but that's okay. So uh, that was. Uh, it took us a while to get through uh, the second project here, the JCAR Mini project number two. Now we can get on with the other JCAR Mini projects. So I'm going to try and play catch up with those. I'm way behind. So um, yeah, look forward to, to 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 more mini projects in the near future. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. And please remember to hit like and subscribe.